We move on now to a favourite locomotive of mine, the A3, Gressley A3 class. And this is Hornby's latest magnificent model, but it can be improved. They do three types of A3, or three individual models. There's Windsor Lad with single chimney, the White Knight as this one with double chimney and German style smoke deflectors, and Flying Scotsman in 2004 condition, which you will have seen at the beginning of the programme. They also do the A1 um, Great Northern in immediate LNER condition, very first LNER condition, but I'm not dealing with that one now. What I'm doing here with the White Knight is retroing it slightly in, in taking the smoke deflectors off. If you look here, you can see these are very, very fine smoke deflectors, lovely actually, as fine as an etched one. Um, but I'm retaining it as the White Knight, but taking, having taken the deflectors off. I'm not going to take the deflectors off this one, but when you do remove the, the deflectors, the handrail stops one pillar short as it did in reality. So what do we do? Well, first of all, the, the simplest thing is to whip the old handrail out, which I've done. And how do we replace it? Well, before we do that, just a couple of points which I think need mentioning. I've put on an etched nameplate in place of the printed one. There's really little wrong with the printed one. It's very, very fine indeed. But the etched one, if I sort of wiggle it around, does have relief, which the flat one doesn't. I've also stuck on the replacement front number plate. If you look at the sixes, the one on the left, which is correct Gill Sands, is in fact incorrect, because the White Knight always had the curly tailed six. So Hornby have got it right, but got it wrong. Can't win, can they? If ever you need to know about A3s, you must get this book, The Book of the A3s by Peter Costa. It's absolutely brilliant. Some of the pictures are superb, but if you look closely, you can see the curly tail six, which the locomotive always retained. If you look across this side, that's the correct style six, which some locomotives got. It's one of those sort of curiosities. Engine picking, as Erwell would say. And if you note, there's this handrail and it clips to the front of the smoke box. For those of you who want to know how I thread handrail pillars onto handrail wire, I suggest you buy part one and part two of this series because it's explained in the most lucid of manners in that. And these have a habit of sort of sliding off. So if you bend the handrail wire at 90 degrees or just beyond 90 degrees then they can't fall off. Now this is going to be a little bit too long to begin with so I'm going to have to do a tiny bit of fettling. I'm going to thread it on first just to see how much. Now these should just go into the original Hornby handrail pillars. Don't take them all off because they're rather good and they're in exactly the right place. So thread them on. That's going to need shortening a bit. So let's lop a bit off. Probably a bit more. Just nip little bits off until you're satisfied. I've drilled a hole in the appropriate place. So that goes in. This is very, very runny, sort of shoots everywhere. We only need a tiny bit on the end of the pin. And introduce it, if you can, to the bottom of the handrail pillar. To the handrail pillar. It flashes in. Don't worry if you get a little bit over. In fact, I have got a little bit too much on there. That will clean off afterwards with the fiberglass brush. I've drilled a little hole in the front of the smoke box. Not in the door, in the ring. That's it. And in it goes. 
and they go up ever so slightly as they reach the front of the smoke box. They turn up. And now I'm going to lock that off. And then just clean this up. And the two lip up exactly the way they should turn up. They are then painted and they then disappear, but we have to reinstate them. One thing that Hornby have also done is replicate these sort of little pipes and wires and whatever they are, atomizers, that kind of thing. Uh, and they've done a bit of a daft thing because they've done a mirror image both sides and all this stuff at the top end shouldn't be on. It's only on one side. This bit at the bottom should be, but it's only on one side. Let's go back to the A3 book. In fact, we can look on the cover. You can see this little wiggly bit there that comes out. Goodness knows what it does. I haven't the faintest idea, but it's visible in prototype pictures. I tend, as a rule of thumb, if I can see it clearly in a prototype picture, then I'll replicate it if I can. Um, all these other little wires we can put in afterwards, but I'll just put that, that one on for you. And that's made from a handrail pillar and it's going to go in there. So what I'm going to do, if I can, is just put a tiny bit of the runny super glue in the hole. Now she's going to grab straight away, I know it is. There we are. And then press that in place. And it has, it's grabbed immediately. That worked fine, didn't it? I've already taken some of these little wires off and I'll reinstate them with the fuse wire, but I'll sort of push that. It sort of goes to about this position and it tends to then run parallel to that lining band. Ian always insists I put too much of these on when he has to paint them. They should be slightly proud as well. So pull that away. What we can do then is put a little bit of super glue at the bottom so that that will that would just flash just where it touches. Leave that for the moment, let that dry. And already we're building up our pipe work. So that's an improvement and that is too. We can just carry on with that. One note about these being very, very fragile. Already I've lost one of these um, lamp brackets. I'll have to reinstate that. They are scale models and they're very, very fine. I've also fitted um, Markets l and &ER, 3 foot 2 bogey wheels. They are a huge improvement on those. Despite terrific leaps in the last few years, last few months, Hornby still can't make, neither can Backman, so it's not fair to criticise Hornby solely. And they just go on. I'll, I'll put the new wheels on the Black 5 for you to see. It's an absolute doddle to do that. Here we have one that's already been worked on. I haven't replaced the wire here. I should have done, but okay, idleness. But this is Hornby's A3 that's been renamed and renumbered as Enterprise, a great central engine because she works um, the master cutler on Char Welton, Wolverhampton Model Railway Club's large GC mainline layer. Um, but I think you can see, I'm sure you can see the first bogey wheels make a big difference. It's been weathered by Tom, by the way, Sun Tom's. Different plates, a little bit of detailing, weathering, really turns them into splendid models.